So today I'm going to be making our spaghetti squash bake. It's one of our new Harvest of the Month winter squash recipes that we created. And in the oven, I have our spaghetti squash. It's just been cut in half with the seeds removed. It's down on a sheet tray cooking. Um, I'm going to let that bake and then cool. And we're going to um, take a fork and create some beautiful kind of um, mock spaghetti strands from that squash. But in the meantime, I want to get going on a really simple tomato sauce. So I've got some diced canned tomatoes, some onions that I've chopped up, some fresh peeled garlic, and some nice dried herbs. So I'm going to cook the onions in a little bit of olive oil. Then I'm going to do some, um, some garlic in there, add the tomatoes, cook it down. You could also just use a tomato sauce that you already have on hand, whether it's homemade um, or canned, but this is just like a, a simple preparation for this particular recipe. And um, after the sauce is done and the squash has been um, raked with a fork and is all ready to go, I'm going to put that in a um, baking pan and cover it with the sauce and cover it with some really awesome cheese. So the recipe calls for a part skim mozzarella, but just wanted to highlight a local ingredient here, Pineland Farms. Um, they do an awesome, they do a bunch of different cheeses. This particular one is a cheddar. So that's a local, local creamery, and I'm going to shred that on top, and it's going to be delicious. So I'm going to grab a couple tablespoons of olive oil here. And our diced tomato, or diced onion. And I'm going to get that going on the burner. So while the onion is back there cooking, I'm going to take a couple garlic cloves here. And I'm not a huge fan of mincing with a chef knife. I think it just like takes a really long time. I love efficiency in a kitchen. A lot of our kitchens have um, what's called a microplane, which is this, or a cheese grater with kind of like the microplane edge on it. So I'm just gonna, right over my bowl, just grate that garlic. Right into it, starts to juice and smell really good already. And the only danger here is that you might grate your fingertips, but I'm being careful going slow. And I think it's far safer than using a big chef knife on a million little garlic cloves. So I'm going to grate these. And then once the onions on the back burner there have become translucent and you know in three to four minutes I'm gonna add this garlic and keep cooking it. So we have our onions here they've been cooking just for a few minutes uh, they're slight, starting to slightly brown up but I'm gonna add our minced garlic and you know for this recipe it doesn't call for a lot but this is only like five servings that I'm making so if I was doing a large quantity of this recipe a little trick instead of using a microplane like this is to take just all your garlic cloves, put them whole into a food processor with um, a little bit of coarse salt and just blend that or pulse it. And you get like the same texture of like a minced garlic, but it saves you a ton of prep time. And then you take a jar of that and you put it in your fridge and it'll last for a week or so. And it's just a really great um, ingredient to have on hand. So I'm going to put this back on the stove, let it cook for a few more minutes and then I'm going to add our canned diced tomatoes that have been strained and are ready to go. All right, so we have our tomatoes, onions, and garlic that's cooked down nicely here. I'm going to add some seasoning. So we've got dried basil and dried oregano, sort of your classic Italian herbs. Like that. A little bit of salt. side and grab our spaghetti squash, which I pulled from the oven. It's beautiful. You can see I got some nice caramelization, some browning on the edge there that was touching the, the pan. And so the next step is to take a fork. That's your best tool for this. 
and to simply scrape. So I start in the inside of that seed cavity and I'm scraping pretty gently. I mean, it, it falls apart really easily. Um, the squash flesh into nice strands. And you can see now, of course, why it gets its name spaghetti squash because beautiful, thin, spaghetti-like strands, very different than a lot of our winter squash varieties. Do the other one. This is still pretty hot. I um, should have waited a little bit for this to cool, but it's not gonna make a difference. It's not gonna mash it up or anything. It's more just a little hot to handle. So you can let this cool fully before you, before you uh, fork out like this. So spaghetti squash is like a really healthy alternative to regular wheat pasta. Um, it's also, of course, gluten-free. So if you have a, a gluten-free kid or student um, and, you know, maybe you don't have any fancy gluten-free pasta on hand and everybody else is getting spaghetti, this could be a, a really great one to use for them. So because this is a bake, we're actually going to put it back into the oven. So I'm going to kind of Layer it out like that. Take our seasoned tomatoes. Like I said before, if you have tomato sauce that you um, have handy, you can just use that instead. We just made a really simple one with those canned tomatoes. It smells awesome. And actually in Maine, we don't we think that tomatoes are definitely like a summer ingredient and winter squash, of course, are fall and winter. But this year we had such a, a long fall that we actually had tomatoes that were ripe the same time as our squash. So you could really use a lot of local ingredients in this dish, including this cheese, which is a Pineland Farm cheese that I grated. And I'm just sprinkling it right on top. You can be as conservative or as liberal as you want, but I also think that the more cheese, the better. That's beautiful. And then I'm going to pop that in the oven and basically everything of course is already cooked but I want that cheese to melt, maybe even brown up a little bit and then I'm gonna take it out and serve it. All right, so I just pulled from the oven our um, spaghetti squash bake. The cheese is all melted, it looks amazing. And I'm just going to grab a scoop of it here. It's steaming, it's hot, it smells like an amazing Italian restaurant in here. Um, I'm thinking I, I wish I put more cheese on it because the cheese just looks so good, but with a nice little green salad, it's a great vegetarian meal, minus the cheese, it's a great vegan meal, all around gluten-free. Um, you, you check a lot of those boxes with this one, and it's delicious, so I hope you try it.